Do I need to abandon emails associated with a hack even if they're rather hardened? For example, Gmail with advanced security protection that requires a YubiKey or similar to access. I sure as hell hope not because my email was released. It is one of those and I'm not abandoning it. Take that, you hackers. Um, so no, the answer is no, you don't need to abandon them. You just need to make sure you secure things. Um, let's go to the next topic, which is spear phishing and phishing attacks in general. Who wants to lead with this? What is spear phishing? Uh, what has happened with Ledger so far? I'll take the first half. Okay. I'll take, I'll, I'll take a stab at it and then someone else jump in. Okay, so phishing is when uh, you are sitting in a Telegram or Slack or some public chat room or in your email or whatever and you get this generic email that's a newsletter or a generic message. It's targeting a wide swath of people and it says something like, did you know the Ledger database got hacked and now you are gonna be compromised if you do not type your 24 secret words into our public domain. Here's a URL that looks super funky. That's regular phishing. It works, by the way. Like it works, if it didn't work, they wouldn't do it, so it works. Spear phishing is phishing leveled up, meaning that they don't just, you know, just blanket attack every single Telegram channel out there. They're gonna specifically craft an email or a message to me as an individual that's gonna target uh, some knowledge about myself. So this may be, uh, the fact that I have a company or the fact that I'm in this ledger leak or the fact that whatever. And the reason that this works or the reason that they do this is that imagine you have a, uh, like imagine hackers as businessmen, right? If you just do regular phishing, maybe you have a conversion rate of like 0.0001%. You can throw this message at 100,000 people and like half of one person will fall for it. You'll get a few dollars. Even that, you can't really say that you have uh, profits, right? Because the energy they expended is higher than the reward they got. So one tact is to just like target everyone with low effort. The other tact is only target high net worth individuals where we then spend more time crafting the message for them, but the reward is millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. And so the spear phishings can be way more creative. They can use your name. They can use personal information about you. They can use, um, they can get really creative, right? Like if they got into your Amazon account, they might know the products that you like. Yeah. They might they might send me a specific message about um, the fact that my bath bombs have been compromised or something, right? Well, the, the um, best lies have a, a twinge of truth in them, right? So that's why the spear phishing that we're seeing going out right now is in many cases going to refer to the recent data breach. It's going to instill fear in you about this recent event. I will say the most sophisticated spear phishing that I've come across was just a few months ago, and it was actually piggybacking on top of a Ripple airdrop. And these, um, these folks were so sophisticated, the reason that it surprised me and blew me away is that they had set up a perfect replica of Ripple's corporate website that had a working in-browser ledger integration. And so they were basically saying, you plug in your ledger and we'll, we'll figure out the whole airdrop mechanics to you. And if you actually went through it, you could plug it in and confirm and it would create and sign a transaction to sweep all of your Ripple out of your wallet, even though it was on hardware. Oh my God. All right, so um, let, let's talk about the primary hooks that people use for phishing. So phishing has bait. Uh, the two primary hooks are fear and greed. Let's start with fear. Uh, specific examples from the ledger phishing we've seen over the past four or five months. I've received several of these. Um, here's a few. One, your ledger device has become corrupted or compromised, or we have detected unusual activity. Visit this link to confirm that you have control. You visit the link. When you get to the link, it pops up a message that says, a ledger with serial number XYZ is corrupted. 
um, imminent loss of funds, start recovery process. And then it says, do you have 12 or 24 words? Enter word one. Now you're on a website and of course at this point, all of the alarm bells should be going off. You're like, why am I entering my mnemonic phrase into a website? Um, but you're freaked out because your ledger has been corrupted according to error XYZ. And you were told that there was some suspicious activity. So what you're doing is you're scrambling to fix this. Um, I, at least a dozen people I've heard from have lost everything by doing that. The other one, uh, it, then they tailor it to current events. So <clears throat> your ledger account will be disabled or suspended or your ledger has will be terminated because of new KYC regulations, know your customer regulations. So they're piggybacking over the fact that Steve Minucci is a fucktard and are, sorry, did I say that out loud? They're piggybacking over the fact that the US government is trying to pass these new regulations to impose, very, and, and everybody on Twitter is freaking out and talking about it. So they're now trying to tell you that you're, now, if you think about this for a second with all of these, you immediately realize this isn't true, right? So, so what if there's, no one can remotely disable your ledger. No one can seize your money. That's the whole point of decentralized systems. But again, they go for fear. Um, another one I've seen, this is really super effective. We have detected a large withdrawal from your ledger. Now, if you have a, a hardware wallet and you see a message like that, you're like, shit, they've taken everything, right? You have 24 hours to respond before we make this transaction valid. So you go online and again, they say, sorry, we can't read your ledger. It seems to be corrupted. We are going to authorize the withdrawal unless you start the recovery process, give us your seed. No matter what these tricks, the end result is always give us your seed. So this is the fear approach. The greed approach is um, a Nigerian prince has given you a million dollars. You have received a, an airdrop. Money is coming into your account. All we need is a verification. An incoming transaction needs to be verified. You are the lucky winner of a brand new um, whatever. So, and again, how do you, uh, get these riches, these unimaginable riches coming your way completely unexpectedly, you just have to start a recovery process because your ledger is corrupted. Um, have you seen any others? So I have a whole album of uh, ones from the, the Mew days, which are, it's an amazing, I'll post the link on Twitter, but it's an amazing insight when you see them all like back to back because the fear and the greed just because we're seeing it now with Ledger, the tactics were the same back then. So I'm just scrolling right now. This is one of my favorites, and this was a very long standing one, which means that it probably was successful, but they said, due to the increased number of phishing attacks and holder requests from the Ethereum network, we have decided to implement two-factor authentication on all ETH wallets. Please visit myetherwallet.com, which then linked to like a totally fake phishing site, to upgrade your wallet to the new security. Please be aware you will not be able to access your funds, tokens, and wallet once the new security, if the if the new security protocol is not implemented on your wallet. Wow. It's so so they fun. use phishing as an excuse to fish you. That's yes, a, that's and amazing. it works. And it works. All of these things work. They wouldn't do them otherwise. And uh, you know, if you look at the success rate they have on these things, it, it may cause you to lose um, confidence in humanity permanently, but um, so here, what's the lesson here? The lesson is this, all of these things have one thing in common. They're trying to make you act rashly without stopping to think. So they're going to push all of the buttons. You have to do it, you have to do it now. You have something to gain, something to lose and do it now, do it now, do it now. So anytime you find yourself under this pressure stop. Anytime you're feeling uncomfortable about something like this, stop. Don't do anything. Take a step back. Nothing is ever this urgent, right? A lot of these phishing attacks 
um, one of their key components is sending you to a website that looks the same. The only difference you have is the URL. And it's not always easy to see URLs. They use a whole bunch of tricks. One of the most common tricks they're using now is registering domains with Unicode characters that look the same. So for example, Ledger, but the E has a small accent on top because it's a French uh, E with an accent aigu or something like that, or it's a uh, Suomi E with a dot underneath. So they pick from an international character set and they make an E that has a tiny little diacritic mark that you will not notice. They register that domain and you go there and they've got a complete replica of your site. Um, the way you protect against these things is twofold. One, always have a bookmark in your browser of the site that you want to visit. And if you are required to go to a site, type the domain name yourself and try mm -hmm. to navigate to that page. You can also do things like checking the SSL certificate, checking that the SSL certificate should be um, authenticated to a specific organization. Um, but that requires a lot of checking around. Um, obviously, don't click on links. Don't follow links and emails on texts. Um, and if you are, if you do need to visit a site, type it in or use a bookmark. Yeah, emails are just completely untrustworthy. They're so easy to spoof. Uh, you know, I would I would say you should only really trust an email that is you know like GPG signed, but nobody does that. So basically, you should never trust email. Right especially links, attachments, and things like that. Um, you know, if somebody tells you, listen, your password needs to be reset, you can read that email, then you can open another browser window and go visit your own bookmark to that page and see if, in fact, it also has a notice that you need to reset your password. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I'm Andreas Antonopoulos. I'm the author of Mastering Bitcoin, Mastering Ethereum, and the Internet of Money series. If you'd like to support my mission of bringing education about Bitcoin and open blockchains to as many people as possible under open, free, Creative Commons licenses, please consider subscribing to my channel and supporting me on patreon.com slash A-A-N-T-O-N-O-P. Thank you.